Hello everybody, my name is Les Hall and I'm here to provide you with a little relaxing enjoyment as we look over some code that made what you see here. This is a 3D printable castle and we're going to uh, look at the code that made it which I wrote a little bit earlier today and then we're going to examine some things related to the printability of it. For example, uh, well you'll see. We'll see. There's some printability issues. And some enhance, we might enhance it a little bit and you know call it a day. You can use this type of shape for uh, any type of fantasy role play, make a princess castle out of it. I'm going to use it in creative art. Um, of some sort. So, or jewelry, I'm not sure. Let's look at the code. We've got $FN set to 16, so there'll be 16 facets on all of these cylindrical objects. S is the size, uh, 30 in the x dimension. That's this way, the depth from the way we're looking at it. 50 in the Y and 15 in the Z. And walls here is the thickness of the walls for 2 millimeters. All these are in millimeters. Okay. And the program itself consists of this one statement. Castle. Give me a castle, please. Why, certainly. Here is your castle. All we have to do is press F5. And there it is. Now, castle actually refers to a module, and a module is something you haven't seen yet in this lecture series, so it's very simple. You say module, okay? You give your module a name, some reasonable variable name, theme, you know, I mean, letters and numbers. You put, uh, put your two parens here, and you put your curly braces here, one on the top, one on the bottom, and you indent everything on the inside of it. One indentation. And put your open SCAD in there. Your descriptions. Now let's talk about the for loop. Not the four corner. Corner. I spell good. The four corner towers. What we want, and what we have here is a double for loop. It's a for loop where we vary x from minus one to one in step of size two. So x will have a value of minus one the first time, and a value of one the next time. Y similarly is the same. So we will come up with four combinations. X at minus 1 and 1, and Y at minus 1 and 1, like a 2-bit binary number. And this formula in the translate positions the four corner towers at the corners, and this formula, this, uh, this business here, instantiates the towers. Okay? So, very simple, we use a for loop, use the for loop variables, in this case x and y, in a translator rotate, some kind of sizing, scaling, whatever, and then instantiate the object. Excuse me. <coughs> we'll, uh, we'll edit that. Yeah, yeah, we'll edit that. And here we go with the side walls. This example is a little easier to follow. We're going to vary y from minus 1 to 1. And we're going to change the y position. And we're going to make a wall. Ta-da! And uh, I don't believe this is necessary. Yeah. The front and back walls there. I'll leave for you to study if you wish. 
Now, there are only two more modules. The tower. Here's the tower module. All it is is a cylinder with a little cone on top, and I'll leave the details to you. And then we have a wall, which is simply a cube raised off the ground. So, that describes the shape. As you can see, it's a cute little fantasy shape. But there is a printability issue right here. Look at this. Do you see right there oh, on the underside of this cone there's a jut, a shelf. See that? Now that shelf is not very printable. It's going to lead to all kind of unpleasantness. So let's look at this tower. We have a cylinder, we have another cylinder. Let us make also another cylinder. On this one, we're going to say, we're going to change the D1 to 0. Make the D2 have D1's value. And you go height over two, let's say. No, height over four. And then we want to huh, we want to lower it. Height times four eighths, three eighths. Oops. There we go. Got what we wanted. Now there is a under portion at an angle on each of the towers. You can see it there. Looks good. And we have to go ahead and put a plus merge in there. Hold on. We don't have merge defined. Merge equal zero point zero one millimeters. And the purpose of merge is a little trick if we go if we go and zoom all the way in on this thing, we'll see there was a Z fight there. But now there's a slight offset. There's a slight offset, so there's no real Z fight. Actually, let me make this be 0 0.1. Can't leave it like that. But I just wanted to exaggerate it to show you how this is an important trick. This is very critical, you should know this. We were using these two cones to make a diamond shaped cone, a double cone. And what I've done is I've offset by a small amount, which in the code I named merge. Okay, you follow? I said that to 0.1 so you could see it, but 0.01 is what I normally do. And as you can see, it's a pixel in size. You really can't notice it. And it won't come out in the printer. So there we have it. We, uh, we have a little tower. I was going to make a door, but 
you know, we can put a difference in a door in the wall, maybe some other time, or, you know, you know how to do that already. Uh, in this class, we learned about how to make simple vector arrays. We learned how to instantiate a module. We learned how to make a module. We learned the for loop and its use with arranging things like towers and walls. And then we modified the program, made a few changes, da da da, and I will continue to edit this until it is way cool. All right, less out, praise the Lord.